even though I learned about these change-making ways from my mentors in restorative racial justice, I could see all three of them playing out as I read and reflected on in indigenous ways of being in relationship with water. Much of what I learned about water relationships came from an indigenous group of women called the Water Protectors. Now you might be familiar with the Water Protectors because they did rise in prominence a few years ago. They were among those gathered at the Standing Rock protest. The time period was 2015 to 2017, well, maybe even up to today for that matter. But at the Standing Rock protests, where they were protesting the Keystone Pipeline, the water protectors received a lot of media attention. But that protest was not their origins. Women protecting the water is an ancient practice in indigenous cultures. It is an embodied practice. And I say embodied because women have a strong connection with the tidal cycles of the water. This connection with the tidal cycles of water is reflected in the woman's ability to birth new life through the water which flows through the female body. The water protectors protect all of the water for every body. Yes, Leo is here. Let us get you in here if we can because you are also 75% water. <laughs> so as I was learning from the water protectors and about the water protectors, one of the first things that stood out for me was that description. The women are very clear in saying they are not protesters. They are protectors. They're not protesters. They're protectors. Talk about changing the narrative. Demythologizing the story. What if we embrace that way of thinking? What if instead of embracing our right to protest, we recognize that we actually have a responsibility to protect? What if we begin to think of ourselves as protectors of dignity, protectors of the water's dignity, people's dignity, rather than protesters? What might what change might be made, if anything? What new ways might be brought into being? <laughs>